to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, will call the roll. Councilmember Helfrich? Here. Councilmember Holmstrom? Here. Councilmember Lewis? Here. Councilmember Storm? Here. Councilmember Cramblett? Here. Councilmember Zirking? Here. Mayor Masters? Yes. Hey, first of all, I'd just like to say welcome to everybody that's chosen to be with us uh, here this evening. Um, our, um, our guests and our, uh, our citizens, you're all an important part of our decision-making process this evening, and so we thank you uh, for being here. If you are planning to address the council this evening um, on any agenda item or on an item not on the agenda, we'll just ask you to sign in on, on our sign-in sheet here so that when we come to those those points on the agenda, um, we can call on you in the order that you, you signed in. And uh, the next item on our agenda tonight is additions or amendments. Paul, I understand you have one. Right. Mayor, we're uh, requesting to add item 5F, the report from Mary Ann regarding uh, the expenditures necessary to repair the computer system. Mary Ann, does everybody on the council have? Okay, that item is now added to the agenda. And you're you're asking just to clarify, you're asking Marianne for approval of expenditures? Yes, I Okay. Am. All right, good. All other additions or amendments to the agenda? There are none, Your Honor. Okay. Um, members of the council, any um, additions or amendments you'd like to suggest? And I also do not have any. Uh, we'll move now to the adoption of the consent agenda. On our consent agenda this evening, we have approval of the minutes from December 12th, approval of the minutes from December uh, 19th, and ratification of the bills in the amount of $173,275.87. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. It has been moved by Gail Lewis. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Eva Zerfing. Uh, <clears throat> any council discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, we'll, we'll uh, move directly to a vote. All those in, in favor of the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay, our next item is public hearings. We have none scheduled for this evening. So we'll move to our action items. Uh, <clears throat> how we intend to proceed here is with a staff report, any citizen uh, comment or question, and then council action with a motion and a second. First item on the agenda uh, is the approval of the Skamania County Mutual Aid Agreement. Mr. Cook, I understand you have a report for us. Yes, we do. Mayor, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, you have before you a recommendation to approve the renewed mutual aid agreement with Skamania County. This includes all of the fire districts in Skamania County as well as the uh, EMS service. This um, completes the work that we did with uh, Skamania County, as you'll recall, at a time when Cascade um, Box was without fire and ambulance service. All we had within a short distance services that were available in Skamania County. Ultimately, the uh, EMS district withdrew because we couldn't match the minimum for the uh, EMS service in mutual aid. They, a couple weeks later, came back in, and so this is a result of that. So we're recommending that you approve this, um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, we did not have anyone sign up to comment on this agenda item, so the next step is council action with a motion and a second. I'll move we approve the um, Skamania County Mutual Aid Agreement. Okay, it's been moved by Randy Holmstrom. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mark. Okay, uh, we're now open for council questions, comments, and discussion. Gail. 
This this really just puts us back to where we were. Yes. Right. Makes us whole. Right. Okay. I should point out to mayor and council that uh, the recommendation is to authorize the mayor and the fire chief. In this instance, uh, the fire chief would be the interim chief, Gavin Wells. I'm okay with that. That was included in my motion. Okay. Other comments? Yeah, I, oh, Jeff. Good question I have. You made mention of, <coughs> excuse me, Interim Chief Devin Wells. Do we have to renegotiate the, or re-sign this agreement once uh, we've decided that when the task force comes back for the recommendation and if there's a volunteer chief or whatever, whatever the community decides they want, do we have to re look at this agreement again or is this a standing agreement? The agreement with the city of Hood River for uh, Chief Wells to serve as your interim chief will run to June 30th. Your, the task force may come back and recommend something totally different for you, but he would remain until June 30th. I guess and the no, we wouldn't have you to. Do you want to renegotiate? No. Oh, no. The only oh, yeah. instance in which, in which we would renegotiate is if we change the structure sure. that premise So the fact that it might, it may or may not be a different chief doesn't affect. It. That's not part of the premise. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Uh, I just wanted to say for the record that uh, that we're grateful that our partners uh, across the river uh, have helped us out and are continuing to help us out, and, and we're looking forward to the opportunity to help them out when emergencies arise. Okay, no more discussion. We'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, we'll move to our next agenda item, appointments to the Public Safety Task Force. Paul, I understand you have a report for us there too. Yes, I do. Mayor and members of the City Council, in the comprehensive report dealing with the rebuilding of the fire service that I gave you, we included in that report a recommendation that you create a citizen task force to take some time to look at your community and figure out what kind of fire and emergency service do you want, what is that going to cost, and how do you deliver that service. We acquired through the process of, that we've been through for the, through the past for a few months the volunteer assistance of the Oregon Fire Chiefs Association, the League of um, Special Districts Association, and uh, CIS, our insurance carrier. They have all agreed to help this committee uh, in working with Mary Ann and I to get their work done within a 90-day period so they would come back with specific recommendations for you. Uh, so we are recommending that you um, by motion, appoint the named members, and I'll read those names off in just a second, to the task force, and then direct the group to carry out the approved job description and report back with recommendations to the city council within 90 days. Those people who applied that we're recommending that you appoint are Patrick Stewart, Barry Monkoff, Arnie Kanonen, Larry Cramlett, Deborah Reed Sharp, Jeff Pritcher, Deborah Lorang, Ralph Hesgard, Nancy Renault, Rob Brostoff, Richard Randall, Sharon Dean, James Dean, Martha Lamont, Barry Lamont, and Shelly Storm. I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay, we also did not have uh, citizen comment for this item, so this time we'll move to uh, uh, council action with a motion and a second. And if there's questions after that, then that will be the time for it. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the appointments to Public Safety Task Force Committee as listed. Okay, the motion has been made by Eva. Is there a second? Second. Second by Randy Holmstrom. Council questions, comments? Gail? Uh, 
uh, given that they're going to uh, have a 90-day window, uh, will we get minutes or something from the meeting, or will we hear something on an interim basis during the 90 days, or what? So we were thinking about letting everybody know that we will. I, I, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> no, it's the job description that you provided for the group requires them uh, to report periodically. We do intend, either Mary Ann and I will be taking the minutes. We'll make sure that you get copies of all of that, and you'll know of all of their meetings beforehand. Okay, all right, just, just checking, thank you. The other thing I'd like to point out about uh, this task force is that um, we are we are glad that 16 people have applied for these positions. Um, but if there's others out there that are still interested in the work that the task force is doing that didn't apply, uh, these are going to be open meetings. And anyone in the community, and everyone in the community, is welcome to attend and share, share their input. Um, we're hoping to have as many different perspectives as possible on the table here. Eva? Um, yeah, I wanted to thank everybody who was gonna, who's volunteering for this and um, absolutely support that, that this is really an opportunity for um, all the people that have different aspects for Fire and EMS, different ideas to bring those forward and uh, really be part of this for our community. So, I like it. Other comments or questions? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item on our agenda is to elect a council president. Uh, we do not have a staff report on this item. Uh, it's just something that we do at the, be at the beginning of each calendar year. Um, and um, having no citizen comment, uh, the thing to do is uh, to have a motion and a second. I make a motion for Tom. Second. Tom, are you still interested in having that position? Sure. Okay. So uh, the motion's been made by Gail Lewis, second by Eva Zerfing. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. You're it, Tom. Um, moving on, the next agenda item is to approve the OMI contract amendment number five. Paul, I understand you have a report on that? Yes, honorable mayor and members of city council, before I begin my report, we have with us tonight Gary Young, who's the regional director with OMI, and Doug Nichols, the project manager. Uh, and I would ask that all really, really hard questions be directed to them. In August of 2011, the previous city council had voted and included in their work plan uh, a one-year extension to the current OMI contract. Um, caveat for that was the staff would put together an operating format so that the council could see how the city could take that operation over uh, and how much that would cost. Uh, when the current council got seated and we reviewed the priorities, you directed that we uh, resurrect the concept of an additional five-year contract with OMI um, for a variety of reasons that, that all make sense. Uh, so we have in front of you, after extensive work with the city attorney and both Gary and Doug, a proposed amendment five. In essence, what this does is to extend the current OMI contract uh, to June 30th of 2016. The, the contract we're currently operating under ran out on June 30th, so we've been in kind of a uh, handshake kind of an operation with OMI to make sure that the sewer plant is operated. There is a 180 day notification section in this agreement, so should the city want to cancel this agreement um, at the end of the, the five years, the city is required to give OMI 180 days. I should also point out that the attorney did most of the work on this. 
So, Alex, if I miss something, you correct me. Um, but no hard questions. Yes. <laughs> Um, so there is a, there are time periods in here for certain kinds of actions. I think the important thing is for you to keep in mind is that um, this is an attempt to bring the city and OMI into a closer working relationship uh, to benefit the city and to give you a greater understanding about how that plant operates, what it takes, because ultimately you are the ones who have to authorize the expenditure of funds. It, this calls for quarterly reports to the council, uh, as well as every six months, OMI coming in and spending time talking to you about uh, uh, the operation of the plant. There's a lot of things that we're hoping to improve under the terms of disagreement in our discussions with OMI staff, uh, none the least of which is the relationship so that it works to the benefit of the community. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Alex, anything I left out that you should point out for council? I guess the only other thing, that w and it was mentioned in the staff report, is that 180 days when we get to the end of the five-year term and we don't want to continue it, but other than that, either party can terminate on 90 days written notice and okay. get it on the line. Okay. Okay, we've had our staff report. We don't have any uh, citizen comment or question. Uh, so we'll move at this point to council action for the motion in a second. I'll move we approve the contract uh, with OMI. Amendment number five. Amendment number five. Okay, it's been moved by Randy Holmstrom. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jeff. Council question or comment or discussion? In, Randy did have a question. In the previous contracts, maybe Doug, have, have, have there been, in number six, it talks about our flow, um, whatever the TBODs and TSSs, have those been in contract form before? That's Randy, you okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Jeff? Kathy, did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to point out that, that one thing that I was really pleased to see it come out of this negotiation was, well, first of all, I just want to say, I, on behalf of the city, we appreciate your patience with us uh, over the last six months as we went through a transition. Um, and uh, I think that is a first step towards, towards working together. That we've come to this, um, so so thank you for that. I also wanted to say that, that that something that's come out of this that I wanted to highlight is the idea of uh, working together to research and review um, the idea of um, using uh, some of the material as alternative biofuels. Um, when when we can start um, start thinking that th that kind of way outside the box uh, in in terms of you know what what has been perceived as waste becoming something more useful, um, you know, I think it, it can benefit both parties here. Um, and um, it's something, that, that's something I'm encouraged to see develop over the next five years. So I, did, I wanted to say that and I'm, I'm grateful that you guys are open to that as well. Okay. Yeah. I, I just got a general question because I was on council when we originally funded and made the decision to go with the treatment plant and there were really two reasons that time one the old treatment plant was exceeding capacity and dumping into the Columbia which we were faced with potential fines the other was you know in anticipation of industrial development so the whole intent was to have a scalable uh, treatment plant and, uh, and along those lines I just wondered you know there hadn't been much development 
So I, I, so I assume that the, the, the current load on the system is pretty low. Okay, and two, that's been like 10 or 15 years ago. So what's, the, what's our expected lifespan of that treatment plan? And, and not so much answer today, but I think one thing that the city needs to be advised of since it's 15 years old or however old it is, you know, those aren't cheap. I think that was five million or something like that. And I, I think somewhere in the next year or two, we ought to have a, some kind of a study to project its weaknesses or downfalls or when it needs replacement or something so that funding can be planned over a multi-year period. Well, maybe sometime during this, we could work with them to develop a replacement plan or an upgrade plan with time and dollars so that uh, one of the budget issues that one of the cycles could include that. And then we just steal money from electrical to pay for it. That was a joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Other questions or comments or jokes? Okay. Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Yes. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the approval. Okay, approval of the 2012-2013 budget process and format. Paul, I understand you have a report on that as well. Honorable Mayor, members of City Council, this is a recommendation uh, that you adopt the 2012-2013 budget development process and the budget. Uh, program budget format that we've been discussing over the past few weeks. Uh, you have a copy of a sample of that that has no bearing on reality. I just made this up so that you could see in the sample format how this would work. So what we're recommending uh, is the adoption of the budget development process and that format for the budget. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. And then if you approve this, we'll need to set the dates for the first two meetings because in the process we're calling for you to conduct two community meetings to receive suggestions and ideas from the community about budget priorities. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, we also had no, no one sign up for citizen comment or question on that. Uh, so we'll proceed to council action with a motion in a second. I make a motion to adopt the 2012-13 budget format and process. Okay, it's been moved by Gail. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jeff. Okay. Questions, comment, or discussion? Gail. I just want to go back one page regarding the sewer treatment plant since we're there and we're talking budget, that if there is any equipment that may be needed in the next year, it would be good to have that list prior to the budget process so that we could uh, size our problem if there are any. Okay. And you'll see this on the special item that Marianne uh, brought in for consideration tonight, also with the computers. She intends to develop uh, some kind of a replacement and repair schedule for, because you, we have a lot of things right. that need to have that. You need to be thinking ahead how we're going to take care of these. And as we see in the computer issue, we were lucky to get six years on that piece of equipment. We should have 
replaced it before it failed and we've got into the problems that we got into. But yes, that will be a part of the budget. Process. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? Paul, how's this going to look to uh, a member of the budget committee? In the past, we've had the entire budget in a, in a three ring binder, some years a small one, some years a big one. Um, and there have been at least a page or two for each fund, sometimes more, sometimes less. Is that changing this format, is that going to change that fact about how the budget committee works? You've, you've give us, given us this sample page for the program. Is that what the budget committee will be looking at and analyzing? It, it will be a part of it. it, it you, this marries with the columns of figures. So when you look at the columns of figures, that doesn't tell you uh, what are the specific objectives or what are the services you're providing. Because that is equally as important. It is important for you as a council to be able to tell people Yes, we're spending X amount of dollars, and this is what we're going to get for it. And then for you to hold the departments accountable for what those services are and what those objectives are that you approve. Otherwise, we're, we're just spending to spend. And this is your chance to target the expenditures to a certain direction. So I would guess you probably won't see that much difference. But when you see the draft, it's probably going to be, it'll look thicker than it did the last time. And it hopefully will answer a lot of the questions that people have. So, so, if, I, yeah. so if I understand what you said, the, the, the form that you use an example here would be an addition to the, fi to the financial packet that's normally produced. Yes. Okay. So if you looked in the emergency right. service department budget, you'll see the columns of figures pages will still be there. The narrative will tell you what services we're providing. Right. If you end up with a 24-7 emergency service department, that's a policy issue. That will be there. If you're going to buy uh, a new piece of equipment, that will be listed. So all of those decisions are included up front, and those decisions made by the budget committee recommended to you as city council. Yeah. Jeff. So in, in the past, it was brought to the attention of council and budget committee that there was budgeted items for an air compressor. And those, those monies were never used for the air compressor. And it was, take, each was individually taken out from the different departments. So this then will hold the department heads accountable if they want that piece of equipment or that projected piece of equipment to be laid out. You won't have this kind of out in ambiguous when people see figures. Well, they haven't bought one yet. Why do they need to have that budget for that? Is that correct? Right. Okay. Yeah, another question that came up um, on the December 19th from when we looked at this before um, was uh, how many of these and for what programs do you intend to, to produce this particular sh program sheet? My intent is to do it for every program and service and every fund so that every, everything is just laid out clearly in advance of the budget year for this. And so how many of, of these would that be? Probably maybe 9,000. No, I, I don't. You don't know. Okay. At, at this point, I don't. So at least for every fund? Yes. And then, and then perhaps more? Certain of your funds have limitations, and so we want to document that, and, and you may not authorize, and I'm just going to pick one out of the air, you may not authorize the use of, uh, of the funds from the electric department for any capital, but there would be a, a budget item that says capital outlay $300,000 with no more specifics than that. But at least you will have budgeted that, and we would know when we have a need, it comes to council for approval. In other departments, you may go ahead and say, yep, we need a new bucket truck. Let's authorize it for X amount. Um, that final decision will still come to you, but it's all factored into the budget process. Did that answer your question? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. With a joke, too, so that was bonus points. <laughs> Jeff? The, the other um, item, what about routine maintenance being involved with the budgetary process when vehicles need service, tires? And I mean, having that, that have, if you had a routine maintenance program set up, would that be included in that budget process somewhere in this new kind of how you're documenting it out? You would actually see that in the program budget format. So you'll see what we actually intend to do and, what, and roughly when we intend to do it. Okay. Okay, other questions or comments about the uh, budget process and format? Okay, uh, seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Okay. At this point, we need to set the dates, which are involved in part of this, um, in part of this uh, format. So uh, our intent is to have two meetings in January, and I think the 23rd is already taken with uh, council meeting. Uh, Paul, your your intent, if I understand it, is not to have it at, not to have one of these public meetings as a council meeting. No, the idea here is that you would be there, and I don't know, Kathy, whether they have to go into formal session or not, but the idea is that you'd be there and afford the community a chance to come in and tell you how they want you to spend their money, what they think the priorities are, what needs to be fixed, altered, changed, or whatever, and then you just listen and thank them for that input. So, so is this a council meeting that the public attends or a public meeting that the counselors attend? It would not have to go into session, but it would have to be noticed as a public meeting. Mm -hmm. So you could call it budget okay. workshop. meeting, budget workshop, budget, you can call it whatever you want. And as, as Paul was making it sound as if you would say, okay, this is the time scheduled for us to hear from you. The floor is yours, please sign in within the next, you know, until everyone's spoken, we'll take your comments. Again, thank you very much for your comments. We'll take the comments back to us and we will take those into consideration as we start okay. the process. Right. However, that's going to work. All right, thank you. So are there any preferences for uh, dates? January. I'm just available on Mondays and Tuesdays. No Wednesdays. <coughs> What's that? No, no Wednesdays. No Wednesdays. Okay. Twenty <coughs> fourth of January. Uh, that's a Tuesday. Uh, I've got. I'm. I'm out Tuesdays and, and Fridays. I work weekends. Thursdays? You said Thursdays don't work. Yeah, we're going to swing shift now. It's on Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. So I'm looking at the calendar. Um, the 19th is a Thursday. The 24th is a Tuesday. <coughs> Uh, are there any objections to those dates? What are the dates again, though? The 19th is a, is a Thursday. 24th is a Tuesday. Are these two s separate meetings to allow people a choice to give comment? Right. Or are they, yes. so they're not two consecutive meetings to cover? No. Okay. The agenda would be the same for both. But that would allow us to put a time limit on it and still give others a chance at the next meeting, too depending on how much participation they have. Yeah. Uh, the courthouse meeting on the 19th. Okay. So we could go the 26th also. We could go the 17th and the 26th, although. Hmm. Is the 26th the Thursday? 
The 26th is a Thursday. Right. That's the meeting of the uh, Downtown Revitalization Steering Committee. Okay. Well, well, why is the port having a meeting with Problem Falls? They use, uh, they if, use this room. If, if they use this room, we haven't talked about where we'd have the meeting. Um, and they could move. Just yeah. they normally meet here, and that's their normal meeting night. Mm -hmm. The whole meeting at the Port Pavilion, if we wanted. If we could have it at the Port Pavilion. We could ask I, to I, use the school. I would suggest an alternate, just assuming we may have a large participation, this isn't the place for a large public meeting. Right. So either the gym or the other place would be better suited. The pavilion? Yeah, in my mind. Or the fire station. Yeah. Okay. We're going on that thought then. Um, I'm actually coming back from the training on the 19th, so I might be able to make that one in the 24th would be fine. Okay, are, are we okay with the 19th then, today? Okay, recognizing that it would probably not be here. Okay. Um, any interest in having it on Saturday? People that work evenings might attend. No, thanks. Okay. But you, you'd be able to go to one of the others? Yeah. Because I won't be at the Tuesday. Okay. It didn't matter to me. You thought there'd be more input with the public on the Saturday? It's, it's possible. If there's people that work evenings, if we have two evening meetings, then they wouldn't be able to attend. But if we have one evening meeting and, uh, and one daytime Saturday meeting. What's your thought on that, Paul? I, I personally don't see a problem with the evening meeting. You're going to have a, a number of meetings that are going to revolve around budget. To you. <laughs> okay, so I'm not hearing any objection to the 19th and 24th. If there are objections, those will have to come after the fact. But for now, we'll set the set the meeting for those two dates. Okay. The 19th and the 24th. Um, is 7 o'clock going to be okay with everyone? Okay. So we've mentioned a number of different places, which we'll you know, I'm okay with trusting the staff to set up the location. Um, maybe it's at the Port Pavilion. Maybe it's at the Fire Hall. Uh, maybe it's at, at our, our elementary school here in town. Are we going to offer uh, any munchies or anything? We, we can work that out. We could also set up a Gales <coughs> book page for it. Well, if, <laughs> if you like chocolate, I got plenty of chocolate. There you go. Is it, was it, you're going to make pie? Uh, <laughs> I buy, I buy everything. Bye, bye. Yeah. yeah, we'll have refreshments there. Okay. Thank you, Council. Now, refreshments, that's drinking, right? Or is that no. munchies too? No. Okay. Maybe chips and dips and cookies, coffee. Yeah, we can spike the punch. We will, Mayor and Council, we will have to fairly quickly deal with the, um, the second step in the process, which is that Saturday work session following the community input where you meet with department heads, your boards and commissions. Okay. Should we go ahead and schedule that now so it don't get in the way of anything or as a placeholder? I think that's a good idea. Um, it's February 11th. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I just got to thinking here, and I didn't know if you guys remember, was still planning, it was tentatively set quite some time ago, if you guys have a work session, January 18th. So just letting you guys know that if you meet on the 19th, that's two months. If you were still planning on the work session, part of that agenda was discussion on committees and. And we well, did have that else. discussion. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what else was on that. At the last work session. So that is, so we, we, had, we had booked every Monday in December and every Monday in January right. um, for work sessions or regular meetings. And since there's a national holiday, 
um, from 16. Um, we had moved it to the 18. 18. We had moved that to the 18. Um, but as, as I recall, the, the, that was the, um, the dis discussion and, uh, and work session on committees was was the was the last of our list of five items that we wanted to get done in work sessions and my feeling was we came to some conclusions on that on that uh, at our December 19th work session and so I'm not sure that we have enough for a, a whole other work session agreed okay. so on to budget well, thanks for the reminder um, so back to scheduling the uh, uh, February Saturday work um, work session. Um, we've got the 11th is a Saturday in February um, 18th. Tom, I understood you to say you work weekends. We talked about that last time. Yeah. I think I could get one off here and there. Okay. Um, I can do a lot of it. Right. Um, I feel like I have two on Saturdays. Okay. <clears throat> so it'd be a, we'd start in probably 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You think the 11th would be okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any objections to the 11th? So until we hear otherwise, we'll have those scheduled. If we have to make changes, we will. We'll have a couple other opportunities in the meantime to make changes on those. Okay. Any other um, issues with the the budget uh, formatting process? Paul. Uh, no, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay, Gail. Well, what's the what's the meeting on the eleventh? What's the scope of that meeting for again? So this is, it's in this uh, staff report. Right. Um, and it's, we really, we have a list of six steps for the budget process. The, the first step is the two community meetings that we've scheduled right. in January. The next step is the work session between city council, department heads, and the citizen budget committee members. Okay. Um, and any other city boards and, and committees possibly. So, so does that mean uh, Devin should attend that? Right. As the department head. Yeah, thank you. And the public works guy that we never see. So, so you'll have the, idea, the idea was that after you heard the input and ideas from the citizens, then you sit with your staff, the boards and commissions, department heads, and talk about what we hear, what is it. They'll come in with revised list if there's revisions. Then your next step, which would come in um, step three, is then for you to formally establish the budget priorities. So based on the community meetings, the meetings with staff, boards, and commissions, what are the priorities for the development of the budget? And, and so since the, the February meeting does involve a lot of people's different schedules, um, some of them are part-time with us, we may need to be flexible when we can have those meetings to involve all of them. So let's just keep that in mind. Um, but we'll, I, I think we'll have a chance this week to, to check that out and, right. and firm up the schedule. Okay, we're we ready to move on from the budget process and format. Okay, next item on the agenda is a report on expenditures and a request for approval of expenditures for the city server and perhaps other technology. Uh, Mary Ann, I understood that you handed out a um, staff report to, uh, to all the um, council members, and you'll have a brief report for us now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and City Council. Give you a little background of what transpired 
over a week ago. Um, on December 31st, when I came in in the morning, uh, we had no uh, servers. I was able to reboot everything but one, um, which was our main domain server that holds our email and our uh, authentications for us to get in other parts of uh, the system. Uh, after calling our IT person, Dave, he came down immediately and we were able to test, uh, not that particular day, but on the following Tuesday, we were able to test some of the components and both redundant power systems had failed and also the computer board had failed. With that knowledge, we felt it was not in the best interest of the city to start throwing parts at this uh, server uh, with two reasons. One, it was six years old. And another reason, we didn't know what other components of the server had failed. Um, the RAD could have failed, the hard drives could have failed, we just didn't know. So with that knowledge, we made a decision to purchase a used uh, server, which was identical to the one that failed, in order to recover our data. Um, we could have shipped our data out to recover it, but that cost money and time. We felt if we got a server with the identical processor, everything, that we would just be able to take the drives out, put them in the new one, and as I say, wham, well, it worked. And it did. Um, we had just one little minor glitch, but we were able to get the server back up at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Our server arrived at 11 that morning, so Dave uh, immediately came down and got it up and running by 3. The issue with the server now is we are using a six-year-old server again. Uh, we don't know how long it's going to last. Um, it is, I have been told by our IT guy who is the expert, I, I'm not that much of an expert, the servers are only about four years and, and you need to replace them. We have gotten six years out of the server. So uh, I'm coming before you to ask for approval to purchase a new server. Um, because I'm one, I don't know how long this one's going to last. We hope it lasts uh, at least till we get the new one. Uh, I got two bids. I was able to get uh, Dell to give me a quote. We did purchase a server from them uh, a little over a year ago um, for the accounting software. And then um, a company called, and they use Icon as their, their signature, but it is called Rico. Uh, they recently purchased Icon. And I called them and they were able to give me also a bid. After looking at the two comparisons, uh, Dave Cunningham, our IT guy, looked at both comparisons and he is recommending that we take the uh, purchase uh, quote of Dell for $4,328.87. And that the reason, one of the main reasons that we like Dell is we are getting more of a uh, processor than what Rico could give us. Uh, they're giving us, a, Dell has given us an Intel processor where Rico uh, did not quote that. Uh, otherwise their bids are, are fairly comparable. Um, I do want to let you know that, that as a, from a financial perspective, um, I have acquired uh, information from our claims from CIS. This does fall under a claim uh, because it is city property, it was damaged, it wasn't damaged because it was failed because of usage. It failed because of a power outage at BPA. And the surge that came back through the lines burned everything out. So they have said that it is a, a good claim, however, I haven't got the paperwork into them, but if everything goes right, all we will have to pay is the thousand dollar deductible and the insurance will pay for the rest. So. In order for me to go ahead, I do need approval uh, in the amount uh, that I've asked for, even though we might get that reimbursed, because I cannot purchase it without your approval. Any questions? Sure. Would those reimbursements include uh, the contract service of your IT guy? I can, I haven't got into the, to what it's going to include. I know it will include the cost of the equipment. I don't know if it includes the cost of his time. Mm -hmm. But um, I will sure ask um, my claims adjuster about that to make sure. Okay, thanks for the report, Brandon. Um, 
if uh, the next thing for us to do is uh, take action with a motion and a second. Mark? Motion the uh, City Council by motion approve and purchase a new server from Dale in the amount of $4,328.87. Okay, motion has been made by Mark. Is there a second? Second. Second by Gail. Okay, Council discussion, question, or comment? Gail. Hey, I, <coughs> I understand this is the kind of one step just to recover. But in discussions with you, we have a lot of other exposures. Yes, we do. From the fact of not having a, 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 a UPS recovery and a good backup scenario. Correct. And I, I would just suggest as a second phase, you at least outline those costs. Because even if we migrate to a new server, we're still at risk from similar situations or long-term lag times to recovery until we get these other things in place. That is correct. So, Paul, if you could ask her to outline what the next phase would be to make us whole or better than whole. I just don't think we should be at risk of losing data or losing work time because of traumatic failures like a power failure. Thank you. Marianne, could you, could you just go over um, the, you, you talked a little bit about what happened. There's a power failure at BPA. There was a surge in the lines. Yes. Um, so sometimes I'm under the impression that my, those little surge right. protectors I plug my electronic equipment into are actually what they, what they're called, protectors. Mm -hmm. We used that, protectors. That could you and just explain <coughs> a little bit about? And, and we do have that. surge protectors and battery backups on both of our servers. The one thing that our battery backup and quote surge protectors, one component, does not show us is if a surge has come through and took out that surge protector. We don't know how many surges came through prior to this big surge that we think we took. Our, bat our surge protectors might not have been good at that time, even though it shows on the front of the panel that there's been no hit. So, that's why when I go to purchase a new surge protector or battery backup, there will be lights on there that says whether the surge protector is good or not. Because right now, no lights are indicating good or bad. But normally, a surge protector will protect your equipment from this kind of damage. We believe that the other server, the battery backup and surge protector, did what it's supposed to do because it didn't take any type of hit, but we also think that surge protector is gone now because it stopped the surge. I have purchased another surge protector um, that Dave recommended to get us through this point, um, and it all has to do with the amount of jewels that, that is allowed to protect it. So we did purchase one. We now have it on both computers, plus our battery backup is on there. So if any of the surge protectors are still working, we're double protected, but he believes that neither of those surge protectors are good because of the hit we took and possibly hits before this one hit. When the lights go out and come back on or any type of phases that happen, it's my understanding those could hit your surge protectors. And that's the best I can explain with the knowledge that I have. We had protection digital. in place, it just didn't we mm -hmm. had protection in it, place. It protected once, yeah. but not in a series. But not in a series. Right. Just like your one at home, probably. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll take one hit, but a lot of them at the bottom have an off-on switch. Yeah. And when you get a surge, it'll kick it off. Yeah. And once that's off, you're no longer protected unless you turn it over and turn it back on. But these certain backups don't have the lights and... and I, we're, we're just not sure whether they're even protecting us. Okay. And to my knowledge, he doesn't. He is not aware of any test we can do on them. We're going on the assumption that they are bad, and we're going to purchase a new battery backup and surge protectors for both of our computers again, I'm with upgrading to the lights that will tell me if we've taken a hit or not. How much did those cost? We have not priced them out. Um, I thought you said you already bought them. No, I bought one surge protector to put into our electrical outlet okay. and then plug the, the computers into. And he bought 
a very nice surge protector, so it, Okay. I mean, it's protecting us. For temporary. Okay. For temporary. But it would, it is a good idea to get us other ones so that we have that surge protector there, and then we have another two surge protectors with okay. the one I'm going to purchase. Okay. Would the insurance pay for any of that? We believe so. I've already talked to the insurance. I told them that we lost both of our surge protectors. So they are aware of how much we took uh, on a hit. And I also explained to other citizens in our community that also have communicated to the city that they also have some problems. So it wasn't just us. But, but I want to caution just on, on the insurance. I'm not sure how our insurance is, but a lot of times they, they won't just pay for a replacement you know, they take depreciation into account. Our insurance policy is replacement. Okay, policy. that's good. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, other questions, comments about this? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the appearance of interested citizens, um, sharing a variety of perspectives on issues facing our community. We did not have anyone sign up for those this evening, so we'll move to our reports and presentations. Um, first up, uh, City Administrator Report. Paul, I understand you have a report on a process to recruit and hire a new City Administrator. Right. I, I have, you should have attached or included in your agenda uh, item 7A1, which is that process for recruiting a new administrator. Uh, so let's cover that first, and then I'll go back to my report, which you also have, which is on the dais with the orange sticker on it. So included in my contract and work plan with the city is the recruitment, selection, and hiring of a permanent administrator for the city. Uh, and so this is a discussion item. This is not asking you to make a formal decision. Uh, this is to give you a chance to give input and suggestion and then you come back in a week or so with a formal recommendation to start the process. So what I'm recommending is that you discuss this and provide direction uh, for the recruitment <coughs> selection process. What I'm suggesting is that sometime in January that you develop the position description along with what kind of skills, experience, and other requirements that you have for your new city administrator. That's the what kind of person do we want to be city administrator question. Second, that you begin recruitment and advertising and getting the word out. So once you've done your part and tell us what kind of person you want, and we can build a job uh, description and the notification, we will get that out in February. Step three would occur in March. Uh, we would organize a technical panel of citizens, um, possibly a city manager or two from somewhere else, maybe <coughs> from across the river, maybe Bob Francis, to participate with you in making sure that you select the right kind of person. Uh, and then we would uh, set up a schedule so that uh, anybody who comes and applies would be looked at from by your staff, members of the community, uh, and anybody else you want to look at them. In May, we would have a deadline for applications. Uh, and also in May, we would screen the applications down to five to seven. Step six would occur in June, where we'd have interviews in town uh, that would include employees, community members, and maybe some others to help advise you as to who the best candidate is. In June, we would also then send a delegation from the community, maybe two or three council members, to the home community of the, of the finalists, so you can check those people out there and then come back and report. Uh, and hopefully then, in, by the end of June, make an offer to hire, and then with the goal that the new person would be on board by August 1st, and that would allow about a 30-day transition period so I would still be here till June 30th, but you'd have a new person come in and we could do a transition. And you'd be here till August 30th. August 30th, yeah. Thank you, Paul. 
Um, so if I understood you, you're, you're asking us tonight to discuss and provide direction on this. Right. Okay. So this time we'll, uh, we'll discuss and if, if we can provide some direction. Any comments or discussion? Uh, I had a question, Paul. I, I think a few times the council has used League of Oregon Cities and their uh, executive selection group to do the to do that. Do you feel comfortable taking the lead on doing that? Um, I do, and I've done this for communities before. So, <clears throat> if I do it for you, it's included in the contract that mm -hmm. you're currently paying me. If we go to the League of Oregon Cities, it'll be about six thousand dollars plus advertising. And if you want to go to the League of Oregon Cities, that's fine, too. But the current contract includes me doing that with you. Okay. Eva. Um, do we have anything started as far as what the position description? We don't have anything from the past or anything? It's going to be, are we starting from fresh? I would suggest you start from fresh. Okay. And part of the reason, Eva, that, that makes sense is that the last process didn't didn't get you anywhere so I'm not sure there's anything there for you to salvage but this is a new council I think you, you should do this from scratch on your own and build our fundamentals basically yeah yeah I, I, I don't want this to come out wrong but is it really necessary to involve so many people my suggestion that is came out that well. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as I get. Yeah, my suggestion is yes. I've seen city councils who keep this as a decision they alone make, but I think given the, the climate in local government today, letting your employees interview the finalists and give you input, having citizens do that, and it's not going to hurt you to have a few other city managers or administrators from around the region give you input. The final decision is yours. And the answer is that's that's the best, strongest way for you to go. But you could do it all on your own and not involve anybody. Jeff. Well, I'm, I'm not oh. saying, I, I'm just looking for more of a middle road, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem involving some, but I don't know. But I'm kind of a weak link here, so. I'll, I'll follow suit. Well, I think, it, I mean, I think if you've got uh, kind of a more specific proposal, I, I think we'd all be interested in hearing that. Well, I'll study it more and I'll okay. come back with one. Okay. Jeff? I was going to say I support Paul's idea. I, I think the more eyes we have looking at a candidate and perspectives that they bring is an asset for us because this person that we hire is going to affect our community. And, there's somebody that sees something that we all didn't see, and it's brought to our attention for those recommendations and listening to the voices of the community. I think it's a big thing, or the staff. So I support Paul's idea for this process. And, and Gail, just to kind of get back to what you were talking about, I'm guessing that you're referring to step three with the organization of a technical panel and a citizen panel. Because yeah. that's other city managers. It's right. um, that what what this proposal says is twenty local citizens, um, and then also a role for city staff boards and yeah. commissions, all in one one step. Um, and, and my thought, I, I I agree with Jeff. I like the idea of having I, a variety I, of different perspectives, but um, I think that. I think that by having this, maybe the word to use is front-loaded, so that we get that kind of input um, in the process in step three in March, before our deadline for applicants, we have we have that. We're we're already rolling with that by the time, you know, the the interviews and visitations and things like that happen. So it, it there's a lot of input early on. And once we narrow down the process, the, um, it comes back more to I think what you're what you're suggesting is that the 
that the council makes a decision after receiving all that input. Yeah, I, I, I'm not opposed to input. I'm just looking for efficiencies, you know, and it's a trade-off. Sure, always is. Eva? I look at it kind of a little bit too from a different um, standpoint that um, if you're trying to get people out of the community who are fresh, you know, even new people, people have been here for a long time, people trying to get more people to be involved, that this is, these are great opportunities for people to gain experience and gain, gain confidence in order to move forward, you know, say that they never thought it was imaginable that they could be in city government or, or uh, volunteer and do those kind of things. So I like the aspect of that. Even though oh, yeah. the efficiency part of it, you know, it doesn't quite meld up as well with that, but I like that portion of it. <laughs> and sometimes you're better off erring on the opposite side of efficiency, but affording lots of people an opportunity to help you make a decision because that's where you pick up a lot of strength. The thing to do would be for us just to put an ad, you interview people and make a decision, that would get it over and done with. But I think in today's climate for local government, that is a guarantee that you're going to have nothing but problems. Appreciate your opinion. Thank you, sir. As long as you appreciate mine. I do. Yeah, and, then, and, and just to kind of follow up on that, that's that's basically what we did the last time. We advertised, narrowed it down, interviewed, offered it, and then a couple months later. Ended up well, I, I assume you did back, background checks. Yeah. I mean, I, I rely on that sometimes more than the damn interviews. Anybody can interview good. Um, so when we talk about um, developing the description, the skills wanted, experiences, requirements, other factors, the, the question what kind of person do we want, um, getting that done by January, um, I'm assuming that's not happening tonight. It is not. And we've got, um, we've got those two budget meetings already scheduled. We have another regular meeting scheduled for the 23rd. Um, we've got that open time that Kathy pointed out on the 18th. At what point do we see ourselves sitting down to have that discussion and, and determination? To answer that question, what kind of person do we want? Gail? Well, maybe there's something we can do, you know, prior to sitting down. If each of us begin a list of ourselves of what we see as some of the minimum job requirements or skills, and funnel those into Paul, give him something to do. <coughs> <coughs> and then once we've got those, sit down to discuss that. At least that way we're not starting a meeting with a blank sheet of paper and, you know, waiting for somebody to have a, a vision, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's a little bit of homework, but it's not that hard. Mayor, I, I, I like that idea. Paul? I, I, what I can do is provide you with a... <coughs> <coughs> a simple format, and then at the meeting on the 23rd where you're asked to take final action on this, we could pull all that data together, you could refine it, and then boom, you're done with that piece. Okay. It, it, it's more of a brainstorming thing, and it's, but it requires you to think carefully. You just don't want anybody walking in here and doing yeah. this. You need to think about where you're going, what kind of person, what skills you want them to have. If you want economic development, maybe you want somebody who has stronger economic development skills than they do finance skills or, or vice versa. But we could do that. So, so when you say you put together a format, that's a little different than well, Gail suggested we come up with a, we, we provide something. So are, are you suggesting that you would contact us individually share a format, get some feedback from us prior to the meeting on the 23rd, and then we take action on that. Yeah. What I'm question. suggesting is based on Gail's recommendation, what I'll do is put together a format An outline. That, and get it to you, and then all you have to do is fill in the blanks, get that to me, and I can summarize that prior to the meeting, and then put it up, I'll probably put it on newsprint, and then if you see there's anything that's missing, you can add to that. Yeah. From there, I'll, we'll design the, the job announcement, what's 
skills you're looking for, what kind of experiences. So there will be a little bit of homework after you contact each of us. Uh, right. Yeah, it's feedback. a great homework. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Gail. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, other comments or questions or discussion? Uh, do you have the the discussion and direction that you need on this item? I do, yes. Thank you. And you have other, another report for us. I do. You have uh, in front of you uh, my uh, report for January 9th. Uh, it, it's the one with the orange tag on it. Uh, on the emergency services department, um, the city council in Hood River uh, tonight is acting to approve the mayor's request that you authorized him to make to provide uh, Devin Wells as your interim chief. So the, the latest word I had this afternoon, that will be approved. So as of tomorrow, he will be the interim, formal <coughs> interim chief. Uh, if there's any changes in the current contract, uh, we'll bring those to you as soon as we have those. We think at least the current management and technical assistance contract will have to be changed slightly and that will have to be projected from April to June 30th uh, to meet the new requirements. Uh, Marianne and I will begin this week to draft out the revised budget for the department. Once we get the draft, we'll review it with Devin to make sure we're moving in the direction that he thinks we need to be going in and we're going to uh, revise the budget around $79,660 which is the property tax dollars that are rolling, rolling into that department. In addition to that, um, I received a draft proposed letter today from the fire chiefs in Hood River County. Uh, so we now have a letter uh, indicating that the mutual aid agreements uh, will be reactivated. So I'm suspecting that will be sometime next week. So we have that piece now done may be necessary for us to bring back to you some revised contracts. If we can, if we can just say, hey, just reactivate what we had in place, uh, I think that would be easier. I'm hoping that's what they're talking about doing. Regarding the annexation of the Cascade Locks community to the Corbett School District, there is a meeting Wednesday night, January 11th at 7 p.m. at the Port Pavilion to discuss that potential uh, and, and that, if you'll remember from the presentation by George Fisher, that will be driven by a citizen petition that would be filed to annex, to de I guess, uh, Alex, it would be de-annexing from the River County School District and annexing to the uh, Corbett School District. The mayor is, is discussing the, the concept of having the school superintendent So that, so that you can understand uh, the ramifications on both sides. I would guess that at some point, someone is going <coughs> to ask the city council to take a position in support of the Corbett annexation for the school system. And just to, if you don't mind me jumping in, just an update on that. I had a phone call from um, Charlie Beck's uh, secretary. He's the superintendent of the River County School District. Uh, today that he's not going to be able to make our January 23rd meeting. <coughs> so if he is going to come down to a meeting, it's probably going to be the um, uh, February 13th meeting. Yeah. But I haven't, I haven't touched base with those folks on that. So. <coughs> but he did, I did have a conversation, as I've told you before. He's, he had some uh, different perspectives. Um, than what we heard, and I think it's important if we're going to be making a decision that we hear those perspectives um, and that the community consider them for, for whatever they're worth. On economic development, uh, we've been working with court staff and have developed what I call the multifaceted economic development approach that's in the report. It's the pie chart. You've seen this before, and it's been hanging on the wall back here for quite some time. But the, but the idea behind taking a multifaceted approach is a recognition that in any community to have economic viability over the long haul, you cannot just survive with one project. So to pin all of your hopes on a casino, uh, and then that 
Nestle is not necessarily in the community's best economic viability potential. So what we've been working with the port is to develop this little pie chart that says, these are all the things that we're going to work on and focus on over the years to ensure that we can create jobs and be economically viable over the long haul. <clears throat> what we're proposing is that on February 2nd, which you have already set aside as your date to, to meet in joint session with the Port Commission, and if you'll go to the last two pages in my report to you, is the draft outline for that meeting on February 2nd. <coughs> what we are proposing is to bring in a number of outside experts that would sit with you and the Port Commission and begin to talk about what the small rural communities need to do to be economically viable for the long haul. Of course, you're going to have Chuck and I as your local in-town resources. Uh, some of you have heard Bruce Sorkey, who is the OSU Extension Agent for Small Communities. His specialty is, um, is, is as a community <coughs> economist. If you attended the meeting, I think, Mayor, you were there. When we had the state agencies there, Randy, were you were there? Yep. So he, he was the, the fellow that had the, the link. Um, but he, he talked about what you need to do to be able to survive. And we think that's a good context for you to begin with. Uh, Carolyn Meese with the State Department of Economic Development. Again, somebody who looks at economic development in rural communities from a broader perspective. And the state will have a feeling for what, what are the places that we could go to be successful in creating jobs. Uh, Steve Baird uh, is a private economic development consultant. He focuses on EB-5, which is the uh, foreign investment in exchange for a green card or citizenship, um, free trade zones. How, how do we make those kind of things work for you if you wanted to do that? Robert Weinman is from Monte Community College. Uh, he's been participating in the Economic Task Force. Ruby Mason from Housing. We're thinking about somebody from the Forest Service and maybe somebody from the Gorge Commission. The proposed agenda following welcome and introductions would be a short three to five minute presentations by the outside research <coughs> people of them sitting with you and saying, these are the kind of things that small rural communities need to do to create jobs and to be long-term economically viable. Second would be an introduction of the multifaceted concept and its elements. What do those pieces of the pie mean here in Cascade Locks? Uh, and then a quick report on the current economic development activities. The port has a whole bunch of things that they are doing on an ongoing basis that most of us have very little knowledge of. And so the idea is to let everybody know what else is going on. And then to have some general discussion and then to begin to identify where do we go from here? City Council and Port Commission working together, where do you want to go from here in terms of economic development? So that's what we're proposing uh, in that particular element. Um, Item number four in my report is the 2011-2012 budget cost reductions. I think as I've been reporting to you, uh, Mary Ann and I will begin this Wednesday reviewing all of the departmental budgets to see where we can drive some cost savings, some streamlining, and beginning to prepare the departments for the process of developing next year's budget. I also included some uh, target dates for you to remember. Uh, you'll have to change the January 17th City Council work session as a possible date to the 18th, and if you don't use that, then it would disappear. At this time, we're not planning to use that. Right. Question about that? Oh, <coughs> Jeff. A question about the budget reductions. With our current revenue forecasts, have have you have, have you seen those project projections for the for the next this coming fiscal year and the following fiscal year? What do those look like, and what would we have to go to a percentage cut to ensure that the city stays solvent? Is there that projection projection that we have to do that? At this point, I can't tell you that. But when Marianne and I get through Wednesday with all the departments, we will know what that is. 
or at least where the, what the ballpark looks like. Okay, so what I'm, my, my thought is, it's kind of what we're going through uh, west of here is, you know, you might have to take cuts across the board, a percentage cut across the board for all the departments, just so it's fair and equitable, that, that razor cut is the thought process. Other questions um, from this report? Oh, Mayor, I have one other item. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. And there, there has been a discussion between uh, Mary Ann, the city administrator, and Stevenson. Um, we've been discussing you know, the planning RFP that we have out there, interested in that. Uh, but also the idea of the two city councils at some point over the next 60 to 90 days session to begin talking about how can we coordinate other ways that we could begin to consolidate certain kinds of services, how do we coordinate tourism, economic development, and maybe a whole host of things. And apparently this was done at one time in the past, and I think it's something we ought to give some serious consideration to. That's all I have. Okay. Um, just a question on your dates to remember. Uh, you have a tourism committee meeting scheduled on uh, holiday. Um, uh, I thought that the city observes Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So should we move that to the, either the 17th or if that's <coughs> not possible, maybe they could fill the time slot that we had set aside on the 18th. As I understand it, the tourism <coughs> committee plans to meet that day anyway. It, oh, in spite of the holiday. Okay. And because they are, I offered to, I'll, I'll be here most of the time anyway, I offered to meet with them and help move their program along. Okay. All right then. Anything else on this report? We're not going to be requiring staff to come to that. No, I'm the only one. You'd be the only one. Okay. Randy. I'm, I'm not sure this, this city has taken a stance on writing off the Warm Springs tribe, but, but there are people in the community that still want um, some viable activity with them. Um, but I don't see them listed on here, and they are one of the, one of the largest property owners, probably the most unique piece of property in town. It would be nice to at least include them for tourism or for um, you know, some build out of their property. Um, Are you referring to the, the draft outline at the back? Yeah, the pie chart. Oh, the pie chart. Mm -hmm. And participants. In, in years past, they would have been listed on there, but they're not, they're absent from the, the list. That's a good suggestion. They clearly should be invited to the February 2nd meeting. The, I, I agree with you, Randy. I think there's a number of areas on that pie chart that they might be very interesting partners. What land do they own? Um, Golden Island. Yeah. Oh, they did buy it? Well, they've been at it for a while. Okay. Unless they sold it. Yeah, I'm, I didn't see how they fit into the pie chart. Um, because those are mostly categories for economic development, but I do I, I do agree with you, Paul, that that they have they have a seat at the table for economic development in our community. So I hope that that'll happen. Yes. Other questions or comments on that report? Well, is there other feedback you needed on any of those items? No, only that feedback that you would like to give them. Okay. And did you have a council orientation presentation? Yes, you have a, uh, at your table, you have a blue sheet called, called Council of Roles and Authority. <coughs> I haven't talked to the attorney yet, but I'd like to have her at your next council meeting, maybe spend 10 or 15 minutes talking to you about and training you for the legal responsibilities of the council from that legal standpoint. And in looking at all the materials that are available, uh, I'm still working on getting you some uh, sheets that would identify what videos and, and what online materials are available in the Northern city. My thought was maybe every council meeting to spend a at least a few minutes talking about uh, your roles and responsibilities.
This is something that I pulled out of the latest Leaderboard in Cities uh, magazine. And I think you all are aware that, that your, your role as a city council <coughs> is to set policy and direction. So you're the decision makers. The board of directors and, and the staff bring the issues to you and you make decisions. The, in, in the league document, you'll see that what they talk about you as being community leaders. And, and whether you accept that or not about yourself, most people look at city council members as the leaders. So I think it's important that you consider yourself as that. And also remember that as an individual, you have uh, little or, or no power or authority. Your group, your power and authority is as the collective group. So whether something is approved four to three or you know six to one, it, it doesn't make any difference. Once the majority has spoken, that's the policy and then councils and staff carry that out. So I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I wanted to let you know that we are going to begin funneling you information and starting to do some of the orientation and training work that needs to be done. Alex, anything that you want to add in terms of the council's roles and authority? Quite, League of Oregon Cities does have resources, and I, Alex, at one point you said there was like a super secret password to access some of it online. Is, is you know, I was just on there today, and there isn't a whole lot of material that is that requires that password. Okay. And they've redone the website, um, and there is a manual on there as well. Paul <coughs> referenced a while ago that it's it's now very thick, but there's probably a good ten to twenty pages on this topic that you if you wanted to. Find out more about it. Okay. That would be available online. Thank you. Paul, well, thanks for providing this for us. Um, I guess my, my suggestion would be if there if if we are gonna do a brief presentation, that maybe there's this could be part of the packet um, prior to the meeting so that those who want to would have a chance to review it. Maybe if there's questions that come up they could be asked at that meeting. Which meeting are you referring to now? Um, I think what Paul was suggesting is that uh, it's at the next few meetings that there'll be short five to 15 minute presentations on uh, titled council orientation okay. about roles and that if there's some document, and I'm suggesting if there's some document <coughs> like this one, that it might be provided in the packet rather than on our, on our desk when we get here. Because I didn't read this yet. And, I'm, I'm assuming that if I do read it, maybe I have a question or a yeah. comment. But I can say, if, I'll save those for the next meeting after I have that. Okay, so that's it for the council orientation. Okay. And we'll move to mayor and some council comments. And start with you, Jeff. I want to take the opportunity to thank Paul, uh, Chief Wells, the uh, volunteers, and everybody that was part of that process to help rebuild the fire department. Uh, we're on good footing with that. Thanks again for staff, all your hard work that you do on a day in, day out basis that people don't see all the time. And uh, look forward to this new year. I can't top that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I did want to bring up one thing, uh, not so much to discuss it now, but just plant a seed with Paul. But uh, I, I've always been a fan in my previous life of selective bonuses. And from what I understand, there is a policy in place that allows discretionary bonuses to select staff in varying amounts. It's not scalable or anything. It's just intuitive but Paul or at least I'd like you to take a look at that and if you feel something is warranted uh, maybe present it to council or something like that and see if others oppose it or support it but I just know a lot of the staff work a lot of extra that goes unseen beyond their normal compensation or comp time or anything that uh, you know a little bit of money just is symbolic sometimes. So, 
I'd be glad to do that. You're very fortunate to have the staff that you have. Right. And, and I assume regarding policies, we can interpret some of those policies given our attorney being absent uh, when it's due. But because I think it says it has to be recommended by January 1 or something like that. But that's probably just a guideline. It's a policy that you can change. There we go. Okay, thank you. <coughs> that's all. Okay, Mark? Yeah, I agree with uh, Jeff and Randy. I think that uh, um, our staff is. Um, they do quite a bit, and uh, sometimes I think that they don't get the acknowledgement like they should. And uh, I believe that um, uh, our meeting we had last week at the fire hall, that was uh, really a positive meeting. And uh, I appreciate, you know, who uh, everyone involved, and, and uh, uh, I thought leaving there, um, it was pretty positive. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. Hello? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Appreciate having the meeting and looking for coming to it. That's it. Eva. Um, well, I'll follow up with that. I really like the, um, the fact, you know, when we're dealing with our volunteers and even the people that are from the community that are dealing with it, that um, sometimes if people make a shift in the way that they think or, you know, being not afraid, maybe afraid, but willing to try, that's what I truly appreciate. It. And so I really like the way that the system worked. I thought that the way you organized it was very well and, you know, slowly, rather than just haphazardly, we've been building something. So I really um, enjoy that. Um, I'd wrote a note earlier, when you were talking about, um, we're talking about the charter school and that whatnot, <coughs> you know, I've talked to a few people and um, some people have really, who are really at heart in some of this, some of the people that work for the school had said, they go, you know, it would just be nice if people would make an educated de uh, decision when it comes time for us to do that. And so I like to encourage people with children and not with children, you know, anybody in the community, that they really pay attention to those things so that they're not surprised at the outcome and go, oh, well, I wish I would have done something differently. So that they can definitively be like, no, this is exactly what I want to do. And then I'm going to hog for one other thing, hog your time. Um, I know there's a much more formal process for this, and, and I'll get to that, but... Um, so many of the people that are on the council and the staff and in the community are friends of mine and uh, acquaintances, people that I've met that I, that, um, I owe so much appreciate and respect. And so I wanted to share something uh, with everybody. I've had some uh, priority changes in my personal life that have made me have to make some decisions. And one of them is about council. And so... I've uh, made the decision that I'm going to have to resign my position, and I'd like to uh, deal with Lance and Paul more formally. You know, I don't want to leave anybody in a lurch. My situation's a little bit differently, but um, definitely to phase out so I can deal with the priorities that are important to me. And uh, but I just feel like this is my community. I've lived here a long time, and I want to share that, and not <clears throat> have people just be surprised and trying to scramble. You know, if there's people that are interested in being in council, you know, heads up. And I, get, I just want to give everybody a heads up and kind of equally um, so they would know that. So and I thank you for the opportunity because this, is, this has been a ride. <laughs> and uh, I love my community. Thank you all. Thanks, Eva. And I just, I just have to say, you know, I think the community and the council and the staff here um, are, are really indebted to your service that you've you've given and that you'll, I know you'll continue to give. Um, you know, I, on a personal level, I've learned a lot from you uh, about how to be a, a leader and a, and a council member. And um, so as we've discussed this, it's been, um, it's been hard for me to, say, to accept because I think that it would be great to have you continue on, but I also understand your, you know, you know, your personal decision about your priorities. And, um, you know, hopefully, you, as you're able, you'll you'll help us. You'll you'll help this community, and you'll help this this council continue. So, um, you've got a big heart, and, and we really appreciate you for it. So. Um, <clears throat> I did uh, I did receive this note, and I and I, I need to communicate um, with the, uh, the parents and families. Um, we do have. Um, Parks and Rec on Tuesday and Thursday uh, here at City Hall. 
and that starts at five. Um, because the library opens at four and they, they are gonna be changing their hours, we need to make sure that, that the families understand that the rec doesn't start until five. And so um, if families are in the habit of dropping their uh, their children off for rec, it needs to be at five because there, there would be an unsupervised uh, time uh, between four and five if they get dropped off at four. I understand that may have happened and uh, we just can't have that. There's too much liability and if a, if a child were to get hurt, there wouldn't be anyone they would know about it for, for an hour until Parks and Rec people got there. So let's just make sure that, that everyone understands Park and Rec is at five and um, we do provide supervision at that time. Um, Kathy, was there anything to add to that? Did I, did I touch on? Okay. Yeah, thank you. There, so, there, there are notices on the door or something, right? Of what time it starts or? Um, I believe there are notices up, but just the, since the library is open early and they're even scheduled to start open earlier, I, th I was told. And I think that parents assume their kids are in the library, but they're actually running all over oh. inside and outside the building. Okay. Totally unsupervised. Okay, so they're dropping them off. To the library. To the library to waiting for park and rec. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So if they're coming to the library, probably need to have some supervision there from the families. And, and then yeah. at five, our parks and rec program starts. So. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of people in the community, especially with our newsletter and stuff, us not doing it, um, that have expressed a lot of um, things about not hearing about things, you know, if they don't have Channel 23 and that kind of a thing. So I um, really, really recommend that we find some alternatives for that. And it may be that in this case that maybe for a couple meetings might have to have people outside that meet, greet the parents or something like that that would come in or you know, just think in that way there's a lot of people that don't you know they just don't have, they don't know what's going on yeah yeah i think that's a good idea although in this case um you know they'd be the the problem might happen before people got here to go outside so it is you know i think posting it maybe make, making bigger postings something like that um we can do but we do have to find <coughs> different ways to communicate that so um, here's one, and I'll, you know, if, if we need to, we'll continue to mention it at our, at our council meetings. Um, <clears throat> it's in a, both library and park and rec are important services that the, you know, the library service district and that the city are providing for the, the community. It's just, we just need to make sure that so we can continue these services, um, we have that communication in place. Um, I also wanted to mention, um, uh, that I'm personally grateful, and I think the community is grateful for our fire and EMS volunteers uh, who have uh, agreed to uh, uh, to serve the community in the current proposal that we had last week. Um, I think it's it's very encouraging to see our mutual aid agreements reactivated. Um, you know, on a, a real uh, you know positive timeline. Um, I think we're going to be able to op offer reciprocity to those partners um, because of the work that our, our volunteers are doing. I, I just think it's, it's great for the community um, and it really says a lot about um, people in this community and their willingness to serve. So I wanted to, to, to say a thank you. I also wanted to you know, say a thank you to people who volunteered to serve on our public safety task force because you know, some of them may not be able to you know, carry a hose or, or wear the, the equipment and, and it respond to calls. But they also have a role, they're part of the community that has a role in <clears throat> determining um, you know, what this department's gonna look like. And uh, over the next you know, 90 days, they're, you know, they're gonna have a chance to, to analyze the issues and to report back to us. And I think it's important that we look at that as, uh, as a chance for the whole community to have a voice in a democratic process and, uh, and then for us to be able to take action on, on their recommendations. So a lot of people to thank there. Um, final note I wanted to mention, we do have some openings on uh, two committees. The Planning Commission has a vacancy and uh, the Budget Committee um, 
if I'm remembering right, uh, has four vacancies. And um, we have uh, an application form uh, that will be available at City Hall. Anyone interested in those vacancies can come to City Hall and <clears throat> get that application. Um, tentative deadline I'd like to set for returning those would be by the end of January. So that in February we'll take action to appoint um, members to the um, new members to those committees. Okay. So, um, you know, I'll work with the city staff to make sure those announcements are made public. It'll be more than the traditional two weeks time, um, <clears throat> but there, there are openings and, and those who are interested should consider applying. Can they get the application online too without coming to the city? At this point, it's not on the website, okay. um, but our, our crack techie wizards over there will, I'm sure, be able to get it on, okay. online right away. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It'll have to pass through the police protectors. Okay, uh, that'll do it for Mary Council comments. Uh, is there anyone that has other matters to discuss? Seeing none, uh, next item on the agenda is executive session as may be, may be required. I do not believe it's required. And so uh, that moves us to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? It's been moved by Jeff. Is second. there a second? Second. Seconded by Randy. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Passes, we are adjourned. Thank you, Mayor Council. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how long have we got?